Super Mario Bros. Wonder is probably the most inventive game in the 2D Mario series. Every single level feels unique, and a large reason for that comes down to the Wonder Flower. Upon collection, these will drastically change each level they're in in some way, whether it be by making piranha plants sing, spawning in giant hoppos, and you can even turn, turn into, into a, Goomba. a Goomba. There are over 50 different Wonder effects in this game, and discovering what they all were for the first time was incredibly fun. However, with there being so many Wonder effects, some are bound to be worse than others. So today, I'm going to be ranking every Wonder effect in Super Mario Bros. Wonder from the worst to the best. Now, how exactly am I going to be ranking these? The primary factors are fun and creativity, but I'll also consider how well executed the idea was and how much potential it could have. As of now, we still don't know if Mario Wonder will get DLC levels, so I'll make sure to mention if I think a Wonder effect could be used better than what was shown in the game. Originally, I was a bit hesitant to make this video as I thought it would end up being too similar to my level ranking, but as the list shaped up, this actually turned out to be quite a bit different. Speaking of lists, I couldn't really find a definitive list of every Wonder effect in the game since some levels share effects with others. So because of that, I'll make sure to mention what levels I'm considering to have that effect at each section. Final thing of note, I'm not going to include the two flowers from the final battle, Bowser's Rage Stage, and the final test, Wonder Gauntlet, since they're just funny moments compilations of effects throughout the game. But if you really want to know, they'd both be number one, I guess. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. At 200k, I'm ranking every 2D Mario level, and let's jump right into the list. A large majority of the effects in this game are phenomenal, as they greatly improve the levels that they're placed in. But there is one wonder effect that I think makes a level worse. Significantly worse, in fact. That is 52 Star Rain. All this effect does is cause a ton of superstars to fall from the sky, and you have to collect them and reach the Wonder Seed. Now, if you've ever played a Mario game before, you know that the stars make you invincible. So essentially, this removes all challenge from a level. There are two stages that use this, Scram Skedaddlers and the Sugar Star Trial across the night sky. And if you watch my level ranking, you know that both of them placed quite low on my list due to this flower. On top of just being an auto win, the effect isn't even that creative. I mean, you could literally recreate it in Mario Maker. So for being the only effect in the game that I would say makes a level worse, the Star Rain has to be the worst effect in the game. 51, Snowing. This is the most nothing effect Mario Wonder has to offer. This appears in Pokepeed Pass, and upon collecting the flower, the stage starts to snow. What does that mean gameplay-wise? It's kind of chilly, I guess, I don't know. No, all it does is make snow blocks appear sometimes, which barely changes anything since you can super easily destroy them. So yeah, this one is just really boring. 50, Shovel Pushing a Bowser Statue. Yeah, there's no official name for these effects. I'm doing the best I can, guys. This is the first effect from a level I actually really like, being Secrets of Shava Mansion. However, the effect itself isn't really a huge part of that. At one point of the level, you'll enter into this room and some shovel will push this Bowser statue which can crush you if you don't move quickly. Now the idea is kind of cool, but since you can run away faster than they can push, the effect doesn't really change the gameplay too much. With that being said, I still somehow managed to die. 49, Nosher Horde. This appears in Nosher Lair and just has a bunch of Noshers spawn behind the player to chomp at them. Thing is though, since this is an auto-scroll section, if you just stay to the right, this effect won't really change anything. It does cut off a decent chunk of the screen though, I guess, so it deserves to be a bit higher than our last few entries. 48, Goomba. And we've reached our first transformation effect. These are in general some of my favorites as they significantly change how you have to play. Sadly though, I don't really like playing as a Goomba. I couldn't bring myself to put it lower than our bottom four since I can definitely understand why some people would like this effect, but it's just not for me. When you're a Goomba, you basically can't jump and you move much slower. You can walk on spikes, but besides that, this is basically just a worse version of the player in every conceivable way. On top of that, this effect really isn't that exciting, seeing as Mario Odyssey also let us play as a Goomba, and it was significantly more fun there since you could actually jump and there were some fun stacking puzzles. So yeah, I'm just not really a big fan of the Goomba in Wonder. It's used in two levels, Mama Mouthful and Petal Isle Special Way of the Goomba, and those did end up quite low on my level ranking due to how much I dislike playing as the Goomba. I know a lot of other people do like this effect, but you're wrong, sorry. 47, Time Slowdown. This only appears in Valley Full of Snoodles. This effect slows down everything in a level, so if you've ever desperately wanted to play in slow motion, you can do that now. This effect does change the gameplay a decent amount, I guess, but it's honestly not that creative. Speaking of, 46, time speeds up. This only appears in Armads on the Roll, and it's basically the same as our last entry, but the game speeds up instead. I prefer going fast, so I like this the best of the two. 45, Balloon. And here we have another transformation, which inflates your character like a balloon, clearly inspired by the power flower from Mario 64 DS. Honestly though, I think this is easily the worst execution of this balloon idea in the entire Mario series, as for some reason, you're completely invincible. That 
basically removes all challenge from Blooms of the Desert Skies, which is the level this appears in. The thing is, too, they still have enemies, but what's the point if they literally can't hurt you? It's kind of funny comparing how easy this is to Mario World's infamous tubular level, which is another balloon level, but it's probably one of the hardest levels in the Mario franchise. I don't have any problem with how the balloon transformation itself controls, at least, but man, it sucks that all the challenge got removed. 44, Swimming in Lava. This can be found in Pool Turn Burn, and collecting the flower for the first time here was really cool. I love the aesthetic here with the dark room being illuminated by the lava, which you can now swim through. To get the Wonder Seed, you have to collect five Wonder Tokens, which leads to this being a pretty fun area to explore. There are several lava pools you can swim in, and several enemies you have to avoid. Wait, what? Okay, so for some reason they made you invincible here too. I just don't understand the thought process here. The only way you can access this area is by collecting the flower. So if you're invincible the whole time, what is the point of placing so many enemies? They would have provided for some interesting obstacles to avoid while swimming, but nope, there's just zero challenge here. This effect is getting hard carried by the concept because it is legitimately cool to swim through lava, but making the player invincible to everything is such a dumb decision that I sadly have to place it low. 43, Stretching. This is another transformation effect, and it's another one that I think will be a bit controversial. This appears in two levels, Sproings in the Twilight Forest and Fluff Puff Peak's Palace. What this does is make your character stretch to be super tall, kind of like an Enderman. <sighs> Now, some people may also consider the silhouette effect to be part of this, but that's actually just an element of the levels themselves, so I'm purely judging this based on the transformation's mechanics. Honestly, like the Goomba, this just makes the player worse, as your hitbox is taller and you can no longer wall jump. Sure, you can reach higher up coins now, but this isn't really an effect I'm ever excited to get. It just makes levels a bit more tedious to go through, as you have to constantly crawl to get under things. It's definitely better than what we've seen so far, but I just personally can't say I enjoy it much myself. Alright, from here on in the list, I think the effects are at the very least pretty good. 42, Spiky Dance Number. This effect appears in Angry Spikes and Sinkin Pipes, and it'll put you at the bottom of a big pipe tower with spikes at the side. For the rest of this effect, you have to avoid spike balls while the floor gradually rises to the top. Now, if you know me, I don't really like auto-scrollers that much, which is what puts this kinda low, but they execute this pretty well. That mostly comes down to the aesthetic, as this effect is one of the few to get its very own music track. This music also fits with when you have to time your jump to avoid the spike balls, sort of turning this into a bit of a rhythm game. So yeah, this isn't the most exciting effect in the world, but I still enjoyed my time with it. 41, Lakitu Wonder Tokens. This appears in Cruising with Linking Lifts, and you have to collect five Wonder Tokens before the timer expires. These tokens are being thrown by Lakitu's in the background, which provides for a very unique challenge. I don't really have much else to say on this one, other than it's pretty fun. 40, Walking Semi-Solids. This appears in the level Muncher Field, and it will cause all of the semi-solid in the level to come to life. If Mario stands on top of them, they'll walk in the direction Mario is standing on, which allows us to control the platforms. Now, as a big fan of semi-solids myself, look, I even ranked them all on a little insane. This was a really cute effect. The platforms can be kind of slow at times though, but other than that, this is pretty good. 39 Wahoo! The Leaping Smackerel! Yes, this takes place in the level Leaping Smackerel and basically spawns in a giant one that can destroy the terrain. You have to bait this guy over towards some walls blocking five wonder tokens, which is a pretty neat idea. The Smackerel itself can be somewhat slow, but the idea here is really cute. 38, Giant Water Bubbles. This appears in the level Hot 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 and will cause a ton of water bubbles to spawn. You have to swim through these in order to get five wonder tokens within a time limit. It's pretty fun to move through these, even if you don't have the Dolphin Kick badge, since the bubbles are pretty small. 37, Ship with the Cannon. This takes up a large portion of the level of the Sea Seeker Bullet Bills. Essentially, Mario's put on a boat and he has to try and evade the Seeker Bullet Bills. Whoa, wait, this is like the tunnel of the stage! The boat also has a cannon that Mario can fire out to destroy some of the land in front of him. I do enjoy this concept quite a bit, but to be honest, I think it goes on for a little bit too long. This turns the level into an auto-scroller, and yeah, I don't think it needed to take up this much time. Still a pretty fun effect, though. 36, Pipes. This one you could argue should be more split up, but I decided to include all the effects that change pipes in some way into one spot. This appears in three levels, Welcome to the Flower Kingdom, Swamp Pipe Crawl, and Pipe Rock Plateau Palace. This is actually the very first wonder effect in the game, and I think it works as a a pretty effective tutorial for what these effects can do. In the first level, it changes some pipes' heights and causes this pipe to act like a worm. In the other two levels, pipes will also start to fall from the ceiling. Comparatively to some of the other effects later in this list, this is certainly on the simpler side, but as the tutorial effect, I think this is pretty solid. 35, Big Blooms. This appears in the level Flight of the Blooms. As the name implies, this will spawn in a big bloom that the player has to jump on to cross a gap. As they go on, another big bloom will spawn to take them upward to the Wonder Seed. Jumping on these guys was pretty fun, though there weren't many obstacles in this level, so it was a bit plain. Though this is definitely a concept that could be improved by adding in some obstacles in a DLC level of some kind. 34, Bubbles. This appears in Bluebird Roost and causes the titular bluebirds to spit out bouncy bubbles instead of platforms. I really like the colors of these bubbles, which is pretty much the only reason it's above the blooms. They're functionally pretty similar though, since the goal here is just to bounce in the bubbles to get to the top of this area. Sadly, there's once again nothing to really avoid, but it was still a fun effect. 33, Slippery Goo. 
This appears in another uncharted area, Swaying Ruins, and it completely covers the floor in slime. This makes Mario move super fast on it, and you have to use the speed to catch up to a Wonder Seed. While the concept is pretty simple, I think it was executed extremely well in this level, as the floor below you still sways around. Add on the bumpers that can bounce you too, and this effect turned out to be pretty good. 32, the Bowser Cannon. This appears as the Wonder Effect in all three airship levels. Honestly, that is kind of lame since it took the surprise out of collecting the flower in these stages away, but the effect itself is at least pretty fun. Basically, a target will follow the player, and every so often the targeted area will explode. This can be used to break blocks and thus collect a few coins. Since the airship levels are all auto-scrollers too, this effect adds a bit more excitement to the stages, which I appreciate. 31, Invisible Ramps. This one is kind of difficult because the effect itself isn't really that exciting, but man was it executed well. This appears in Roller Koopa Derby, and you have to explore these invisible ramps to find five wonder tokens. I just love the look of not only the ramps since they glow a bit, but also this area in general. This fits extremely well in this level in particular, as the whole stage had been about using ramps to avoid the Roller Koopas. A ton of them also appear on these ramps as you go, which act as nice little jump scares. Again, the wonder effect of adding these ramps isn't particularly the most interesting, but it was used extremely well. 30, Free Falling. Okay, this one was extremely difficult for me to rank. This appears in two different levels, Countdown to Drop Down and Fungi Mine Special Dangerous Donut Ride. Thing is though, the two levels use this effect in wildly different ways. The Free Falling Countdown to Drop Down just has us fall past some clouds. Sure, there are a few Smogrin, but for some reason they give you a ton of superstars here, basically meaning there's zero challenge for this effect. On the other hand though, Fungi Mine's special Dangerous Donut Ride is one of my favorite levels in the game and that largely comes down to the same effect. In that level, you have to actually avoid things like bubbles of poison and other falling enemies. It's an extremely interesting obstacle course and there's really nothing else like it in this game. So yeah, I was really not sure how to rank this effect since it was used both terribly and excellently. I guess it's not technically the most creative thing in the world though, so I'll just put it here near the middle. 29, time speeds up and slows down. Huh? Why on earth is this so much higher than the other two time shifting effects? Well, the way this works is that every so often, the time will switch from a slowed down state to a sped up one. While the states themselves are technically the same as the two effects we saw before, combining them like this is much more interesting. It keeps the player on their toes as they have to be prepared for the speed to shift at any moment. This appears in Sunbaked Desert Palace, and the obstacles are very well suited for this effect, such as the rolling balls and fire bars. I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with this being so much higher than what it's a combo of, but the fact that it constantly switches really does make a huge difference difference. 28, Giant Snowball. This appears in Outmaway Valley and causes a massive snowball to come rampaging through the stage. Mario has to try and stay on top of it as it destroys the land around him. What I really like about the snowball is how several things are stuck within it, like snowmen and an igloo. It really adds some extra character. I especially love how even the flagpole gets stuck in the snowball. This does turn the stage into an auto-scroller, but I still enjoyed my time with it. 27, The Dragon. This appears in Dragon Boneyard and it causes a dragon to come back to life. You have to ride on this guy over some lava. Staying on top of the dragon is hard though, because the way it moves is really annoying. I'm happy it's dead. No, but actually, I do really like the added challenge of the dragon moving a bit wonky, as it makes the level more interesting. Yeah, it's another sort of auto-scroller like the snowball, but the added difficulty puts this one on top. 26, Angelfish. This appears in the Angelfish trial, ready, aim, fly, and simply task Mario with climbing up a tall tower of cloud blocks. Sadly, the platforms are spaced too far for Mario to jump up them, but luckily this effect will spawn in a ton of angelfish to jump alongside him. So by jumping on these angelfish, Mario can reach the top. I always enjoy chaining enemy bounces together, and that's basically the whole appeal of this effect. It is kind of short, and the jumps don't ever get that difficult, but I still had fun with it. 25, Extending Pole Blocks. This appears in two different levels, Pole Block Passage and Sunbaked Desert Special, Pole Block Allure. Now, the latter level did actually turn out to be my least favorite level in the game, but that's purely because of the slow auto-scroll. The effect itself is pretty fun, basically causing every pole block to not only expand outward, but they also expand in some pretty intricate patterns. Climbing around and jumping on these poles is a lot of fun, and both levels show that off extremely well. I especially like the Wonder Token collection in Pole Block Passage, as you can collect all five wonder tokens pretty quickly with the proper movement. 24, Floating. This effect causes Mario to lose gravity and be able to float in the air. Essentially, this is what I wanted from the balloon transformation, since this doesn't make you invincible, kind of. This appears in two levels, Cosmic Hoppos and Downpour Uproar. In Cosmic Hoppos, it's excellent. First, Mario has to leap off this hoppo to enter the section. Once he does that, he has to float in space to avoid both spikes and hoppos, providing for an interesting obstacle course. Downpour Uproar, though, was set up to be even better. This time around, you have to avoid lightning strikes, which is a super interesting obstacle 
obstacle. Never mind, they give you stars here for no reason. This is another effect to fall victim to the invincible curse. It's such a shame too, because I was really enjoying dodging the lightning, but oh well. The idea is still good, and it was executed well in Cosmic Hoppos, so I think it still deserves its spot, but it definitely could have been higher. 23, Giant Conk. This appears in Jewel Block Cave and will begin to fall toward the player. In order to escape, the player has to quickly break through the Jewel Blocks to reach the bottom. This is a really intense mechanic, and I think a perfect effect for the level meant to show off the Drill Mushroom. The Giant Conk itself is a bit slower than I would have liked, but it's still effective in significantly upping the tension. 22, Blazing Beats. This is another effect to be rhythm-based with its own exclusive song. It appears in the game's second to last level, Knuckle Fest, Bowser's Blazing Beats. It has a ton of fists slamming towards the player. I just really love the aesthetic for this one. The bright orange fists look really cool in the castle. And also the way the player stands on stage when collecting the flower is unique to only this effect and is a super fun detail. It does make this level an auto-scroller, which hurts it a bit, but I don't mind too much. 21, Giant Hoppos. Obviously this effect spawns in hoppos that are bigger than normal, but this was a pretty unique one to place as the two levels that use it execute the idea in wildly different ways. And here come the hoppos, the level just spawns in a bunch of them and you have to try and bounce around until you find the seed. A pretty solid effect, though nothing too terribly special. Pipe Rock Plateau Special, Bounce 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 on the other hand, uses this in a really neat way, as you have to ride on these giant hoppos over spikes. This can be a bit difficult at times, and it's overall a really fun use of the concept. I definitely appreciate the variety that came with this one. 20, Giant Hoppy Cats. This appears in the Hoppy Cat trial, Hop Hop and Away, and is conceptually similar to our last effect, spawning in giant versions of that stage's enemy. The Hoppy Cat's mechanic of jumping when the player jumps provides for some very interesting obstacles and puzzles. I especially like collecting the purple 10 coin in this section. The Hoppy Cats are also able to destroy the land they hop into, which I think makes their effect a slight bit more interesting. 19, Chase the Wonder Seed Through the Temple. Okay, I really had no clue what to call this one. This appears in the Desert Mystery. Basically, you start the effect with the Wonder Seed in sight, but as you get closer, it starts to run away through a newly generated temple. I really love the gold design here. It reminds me a lot of New Super Mario Bros. 2. What I especially like here is all the obstacles, as you have to try and get past them in order to get to the seed. Something else that's interesting, though, is that you can actually skip a few of these by jumping at just the right time or by having certain badges equipped. That makes coming back to this Wonder Effect more fun, so I'm honestly a pretty big fan of this one. 18, Time Blocks. This one felt a bit weird to place, but I really like both the levels that used it, being Jump 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 and Fluff Peak Special, Climb to the Beat. For both of these levels, a song will start playing and colored blocks will spawn in based on the rhythm. As you go on, the music's pace gets faster and faster, making these two of the most intense levels in the game. The reason I hesitate to put this effect higher though is because it doesn't really feel that much like a wonder effect. Platforms appearing to the rhythm of music have appeared numerous times in the series by now, and I think they could have just done that here without the Wonder Flower. Still, it's an extremely fun effect that greatly challenges platforming, but I just don't think it's the most creative one out there. 17, Puffy Lift. It's been quite a while since we got a transformation, and this one is pretty fun. It appears in Up and Down with Puffy Lifts and turns Mario into a big block. While in this form, you can still slide and jump around, so your goal is to reach the top of this area. However, you also have to avoid things landing on your head, since you'll eventually shrink down if they do. Now, you are invincible from the sides, but I actually like that in this case, as you have to use this for a puzzle. In order to get through this wall, you have to bounce a spike ball off of you, which is a great use of the concept. I definitely feel like they could have expanded upon this, though. I'm sure if they had a second harder level with this effect, they could have utilized its ability in much more interesting ways. As it is though, I still enjoyed the level it appeared in, and it's got some pretty good potential in case they ever want to revisit it. 16, Water and Air Reverse. This is one of the coolest concepts for a wonder effect in the entire game. This takes place in Robert Cave, and as the name suggests, swaps the positions of air and water. So at the bottom of the level, you can run around like normal, but now you can also swim in the sky. Gameplay-wise, I guess it doesn't really change that much, especially once you get up to the point where you can't see the ground, but seeing this for the first time was super cool. 15, Bull Rush Stampede. This effect will spawn in a ton of Bull Rush to charge toward the player. This is used in two different levels, Bull Rush coming through and Bull Rush Express. The most interesting part of the stampede is the fact that you can actually ride on the back of these Bull Rush, which is used to get the secret exit in the first level and is the central focus of the latter. Bull Rush Express can be pretty difficult as the obstacles in it work well with the high speed running of the stampede. Now once you get on top of the Bull Rush, yeah I guess you could say mechanically it's just a moving platform, but I had a lot of fun in both of its levels. 14, Missile Meg Barrage. The Missile Megs are some of my favorite new enemies introduced in this game as their mechanic of letting the player run on top of them was super neat. Shockingly, this effect appears in the Missile Megs main level, Missile Meg Mayhem. Upon collecting the flower, a ton of the enemy will spawn in, which takes you into a section where you have to try and avoid a ton flying at you. Wait, Mario, look out! You even have to ride on top of them to eventually reach the Wonder Seed. Basically, this is a more involved Bull Rush Stampede, as you actually have to ride and jump across several Missile Megs that are coming from different angles. I also love the rainbow effect given to the enemy here, it's a really nice touch. 13, Cosmic Mario. This guy has been in Mario games for quite a while at this point, and it's for a good reason, he's just a really fun enemy. What he does is copies the player's movements exactly, so the player has to keep running to avoid him eventually catching up. This appears in two different levels. The first is Color Switch Dungeon, and I like how he's used here a lot because the room is laid out in a way where you have to run over the same spot 
spot multiple times, meaning you could end up running directly into Cosmic Mario if you aren't paying attention. The second level is Beware of the Rifts, which requires the player to collect five Wonder Tokens. I will say, I don't love the fact that you can stun them with the POW, but it's not that big of a deal, so I still enjoy this section of the level. I think you could put Cosmic Mario in anything and I'd enjoy him. He really elevates both the tension and speed of any given level. 12. Giant Rolling Ball This is my favorite giant enemy effect because it's easily the most intense. This is found in Rolling Ball Hall, and upon collecting the flower, the whole stage will tilt. This will in turn cause a large boulder to start coming toward the player, which they definitely want to avoid considering it's a one-hit kill. While the player tries to outrun the boulder though, there's even more to it since they have to collect five wonder tokens on the way. The tilt will shift several times during the chase, which means the player changes directions a bunch too. Overall, this is one of the most intense wonder effects in the game, and it definitely took me a few tries to beat. One other cute thing I want to mention about this is that there's actually a small easter egg here. After you collect all the tokens, you get the seed in this room with the talking flowers that congratulate you. However, if you get to the room without the effect, the talking flowers will instead be disappointed. How'd you even get in oh, here? That ruins everything. You have to do things in a certain order. That's a really fun detail that they didn't need to throw on here. Overall, I think this effect rocks get it because it's like a big rock. 11. King Boo. This is an effect I'm sure places high on almost everyone's list. This is found in Light Switch Mansion and it'll spawn in King Boo himself. That's not him. Yeah, I'm definitely in the Luigi's Mansion King Boo is better camp. I mean, look how much more interesting the Luigi's Mansion design is in comparison. I hate that they keep using this boring King Boo in everything outside the Luigi's Mansion series. Anyway, outside of that, having King Boo sing as he chases you down is a lot of fun. Technically, yes, this doesn't really change much gameplay-wise, but what matters to me is how fun and creative it is, and it's pretty unique from anything else we've seen in the main series before. Though it would have been higher if I had Luigi's Mansion King Boo. I hate the stupid loser. Also, this is funnily enough the last wonder effect I saw in the game, because I somehow missed only this level before being Bowser, so at least it was a pretty good effect to end on. Kicking off our top 10, we have the Singing Piranha Plants. This one is a lot of people's favorites, and I do like it quite a bit, but I definitely like it less than others. This effect causes a bunch of piranha plants to burst out of their pipes to sing along to a song. What's really funny though, is if you kill one or more of the piranha plants, their vocals get cut from the song. You monster. This appears in two levels, Piranha Plants on Parade, and the semi-final test, Piranha Plant Reprise. While I did rate the first level higher in my level ranking, that was just because it had a secret exit. Honestly, I like how the second level uses the wonder effect way more, as it spawns in a lot more enemies and is overall much harder. But the main reason to like this effect is purely because of the aesthetics, and it's certainly one of the cutest effects in the game. Only reason I don't place it higher is just because of me being an auto-scroll hater, but hey, I still somehow managed to like these levels despite that. 9. Pumpkin Party This is an effect I feel like people are going to heavily disagree being this high on the list, but to be honest, I don't really care. The, the jack o lantern, lantern. <laughs> This appears in Upshroom Downshroom and completely changes the aesthetic to this extremely cool looking Halloween style. Not only are the pumpkins now carved, but the stage's background also darkens, with the pumpkins and mushrooms acting as bright lights. The best part though, is definitely the fact that this effect gets its own exclusive song. I really love this theme, it's honestly one of my favorite new songs in this entire game. They technically didn't even need to do that since unlike the other effects to get exclusive songs, this one doesn't really have anything to do with rhythm. It's purely here to strengthen the aesthetic and man does it do a great job of that. Honestly, I think I underrated this level in my previous rankings, so don't be surprised if it's much higher up in my 2D level video. The only reason this isn't higher is because it doesn't really change actual gameplay that much. Yeah, it makes the mushrooms launch the pumpkins higher and it spawns in a few dancing enemies, but really, this is a purely aesthetic effect. Personally though, I think it does a great job and turns this stage into one of the most memorable in the game for me. 8. Hoppy Cat This is another transformation effect, turning the player into a hoppy cat. This allows them to have significantly higher jumps and that is used quite well in a ton of different levels. The three that we see it in are the Midway Trial, Hop To It, the Sharp Trial, Launch to Victory, and the Final Trial, Zip Track Dash. There's a pretty good variety in its uses too. The first two levels both use it to climb towers. I especially like the Midway Trial, Hop To It, since it's very satisfying to take out a large string of enemies in just one jump. The most unique level though is Zip Track Dash, as instead of climbing a tower, you actually ride across a zip track. It's really fun to use its large jump to go between the tracks, though I would have liked if there were some more enemies here to dodge. Still, this transformation is great, and it was always a joy to see it appear. 7. Giant Spike Statue This one's concept is just really fun. When you collect the Wonder Flower and Wavy Ride through the Magma Tube, you'll be placed on three platforms and a giant spike statue will spawn in the background. Your goal is simple, survive. It will spit out a ton of meteors towards you and you have to jump between the platforms until the timer expires. This could get quite intense and overall, I just like how different this effect is from most of the other ones we've seen. They're usually about trying to progress through a level, but this one being as simple as surviving a bunch of attacks is really cool. 6. Pop Quiz Speaking of unique effects, this might just be the single most unique one in the game. If you collect
select the Wonder Flower in Taylee's Toxic Pond, you'll suddenly be thrown into a quiz. You'll be given a random multiple choice question about the game, and to select an answer, you have to jump onto the correct color Taylee. There are 26 different questions they can ask, which means the quiz will pretty much be different every time you play. Now, the nice thing is, you don't have to get everything right. You only need to get three correct answers within the time limit. Personally, I think the time limit should have been a smidge shorter, but regardless, this was a really cool idea. Plus, the song choice is great too. Yeah, I know it technically comes from Mario Bros. 3, but this will always be the one in minigame theme in my heart. 5. Ninji Jump Party This is taken from the level of the same name, and it's one of the most fun effects in the game. Pretty much you could take all my aesthetic praises from Pumpkin Party, but add on some significant gameplay differences as well. Collecting this flower turns the level into a massive party, with ninjis dancing all around in bright yellow and purple colors. That by itself is already great, but what puts this over the top is the fact that you have to actually time your jump to the rhythm. Whenever you time your jump properly, parts of the stage will move in a favorable manner. In fact, some purple 10 coins are even locked behind needing to keep up a certain streak. During this stage, you also have to collect 5 Wonder Tokens which just adds even more to the fun. While the rhythm badge you unlock from this stage is kinda useless, Ninja Jump Party itself is one of my absolute favorite stages and effects to play through. 4. Metal Mario This appears in High Voltage Gauntlet and makes you completely invincible. Huh? Yeah, okay, I know I'm gonna sound like a major hypocrite, but hear me out. Yes, this entire video I've been hating on wonder effects that either make you invincible or give you stars for no reason. But this is a reference to Mario 64. Mario 64 is one of my favorite games ever made, and hearing this effect play the Metal Mario theme was so exciting. Not only does it of course solidify the reference, but the Metal Mario theme is just a banger anyway, so seeing it be here was cool. 2D Mario games also don't really reference the 3D games much, which made this even more special. Yeah, I know Sunshine got a few songs in the game too, but that doesn't really take away from how exciting this was. But yeah, gameplay-wise, this probably doesn't deserve to be here. It's kind of cool how you can electrify yourself with this attract coins to you, but otherwise, yeah, the main reason it's so high is because it's a reference. Since I'm sadly a loser who enjoys references way too much, this one had to be up here for me. 3. Spike Ball This was a clear choice for being one of the best transformation effects in the game. It appears in two levels, where the Rumbas Rule and Deep Magma Bog Special Solar Roller, and both of them use it perfectly. The first acts as a really fun obstacle course as you can plow through a ton of enemies and brick blocks. One of my favorite parts about this as well has to be the bowling pin sound effect for whenever you hit an enemy. It makes each hit feel so much more satisfying. That's also helped with the extreme speed of the ball as well, making this feel very fast paced. The second level uses that speed to its advantage by forcing the player to use the transformation under a time limit. You have to constantly keep hitting timer blocks to avoid the floor from below the player disappearing. This timer is also fairly tight too, which made this level's use of the transformation so much fun. I really love the high speed the transformation allowed for. It was a treat every single time it showed up. 2. Wubba This is the wonder effect to be used in the most levels in the game with a total of 4, though technically one of them is just a mini level. Those were an Uncharted Area, Wubba Ruins, a final Uncharted Area, Poison Ruins, Operation Poplin Rescue, and Deep Magma Bog Palace. This is another transformation turning you into a Wubba. This not only lets you swim through slime very quickly, but also stick to and run on walls. That made every single level using this guy insanely fun. I feel like it's sort of hard to describe, but I think they just perfected the controls of this ability. It's so satisfying to zip through the slime of an Uncharted Area, Wubba Ruins. Climbing along the platforms in a final Uncharted Area, Poison Ruins, while avoiding the poison was super satisfying. Even getting to ride on the Dragon Boat platforms in Deep Mamba Bog Palace was great. I absolutely cannot praise the controls here enough. Everything this guy can do feels great, and I really hope we get to see more levels using it in the future. But for my absolute favorite effect in Super Mario Bros. Wonder, we have one top-down view. This is one of the most significant changes that any wonder effect gives in the game. All of the other effects still have Mario control in the same plane, but this one changes everything. It shifts the level to being a top-down view, similar to the 2D Zelda titles. While you can now freely move up and down, you can no longer jump, which is an incredibly interesting trade-off. You can also only walk where this background present, as otherwise you wouldn't be able to stand on anything. Not only is it just one of the coolest concepts for a wonder effect, but all three levels it's featured in use it phenomenally. The first is Condart Away, and the Condarts themselves act as perfect obstacles for this perspective. Trying to run around their charge while also using them to break bricks was a really good use of the concept. Rogs in the Ruins have a very similar enemy, but this time you have to use the level's blocks to defend yourself from their charge. The blocks only appear when you look at them, so quickly changing while a Rog is leaping at you is pretty intense. But the best level to use this by far was Shining Fall Special Triple Threat Deluge. This has three Lakitus throwing down spike balls at you for an entire level. Not only are the spike balls hard to avoid by themselves, but you have to actually use the spike balls to break the walls in front of you to progress. That makes this easily one of the most intense levels in the game, and it would not have been possible without the unique control scheme provided by the top-down wonder effect. I'm not sure if putting this exactly at number one is the popular choice, but I'm sure most people agree that this one is pretty great. So for being one of the most fun, creative, and interesting wonder effects in the game, the top-down view is my choice for the best wonder effect in Super Mario Bros. Wonder.
But anyways, that's it for this video. Do you think the pipes falling in Pipe Rock Plateau Palace was the most innovative thing in gaming history and hate me for ranking it so low? Let me know in the comments. I'm really happy that this list turned out to be so different from my level ranking. I was really scared this would end up being kind of redundant, but I think this turned out pretty good. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.